Hi, I'm Tommy Thompson, and this is part six of my Pathfinding in Unity tutorial series. In part five of this series, I looked at how to set up multiple meshes to be baked into a navigation mesh for a scene. This largely works well to create a large area that nav mesh agents can explore, provided that we have them sit flush against one another. However, we don't always want that, and it's not exactly pragmatic for environment design, given we might want to have agents that are isolated to particular areas, or we might want to ensure they can only travel between two areas via specific routes. So back in part 5 I worked on an example in which we dynamically build off-mesh links, pathways that enable a nav mesh agent to travel from one navigation mesh to another. Now, in order to do that, I used the option built into the nav mesh baking, but that meant I had no real control over how the nav mesh was placing these links. So in this video, I'm going to start building these by hand in engine and allow me to dictate specific types of behaviour I might want to build into my game. So we want to be able to define where in the world that two navigation meshes can be linked to one another. In order to do that, we have to build our existing nav mesh areas, then create a link to go between the two of them prior to the nav mesh being baked. It will then recognise the established link and allow our agent to move between the two locations. So as you can see in this scene right here, I already have two planes where I've already put my NPC that I've been using in previous examples alongside the basic destination. And if I go into the navigation tab, you can see I've got two distinct navigation areas. Now, when I actually built this, I made sure not to generate the off mesh links. Now, if I tick that back on, yep, change it for everything. We're going to do it for both just to be sure. And then if I was to rebake this, you'll see that it actually generates the off-mesh links for me. But maybe I didn't want that. So I'd go back into the two objects, remove that setting. There we go, go back and rebake it. And you can see that there is now no way for that character to get to that destination. In fact, let me prove it to you. Yo. Now, what you might be wondering as well is why is it that he goes all the way, this particular cube goes all the way to the edge before stopping? And that's because, as far as it's concerned, we don't actually have any contingency in the code that says that if the actual destination isn't reachable, it should stop moving. Provided it actually still built some sort of incomplete path, that nav mesh agent is still going to move towards it. Now in this example, I'm actually going to focus on placing the nav mesh links manually. However, just because you're doing it manually doesn't mean that you can't have dynamic nav mesh links in other parts of your scenes. You can actually have them baked between, say, two particular objects, because maybe you've actually set, if I had multiple floors, maybe I've said for floor one and floor two to not have off mesh links, but maybe floor three does. So when it bakes it, it will still actually add in the dynamic links for floor three. But in this case, I'm actually going to build them for floor one and two. So for the purpose of this, I only actually need to build one link. I need to build the link from A to B, and then provided I say that it's bi-directional, it means that it can move from one location to the other, and indeed vice versa. So let's go through that now. In order to prepare for this, I actually added two child game objects to each of these, which are just transforms, because I wanted to make sure that my off-mesh links were at these very specific locations. So we can see here there's absolutely nothing happening, this particular game object has nothing on it. What I'm going to do is go into add component and then I'm going to write off mesh link or just even type off and that was enough. And I'm going to create my off mesh link. Now what it needs to know is what is the start and end point of this off mesh link. So the starting point is the game object it's attached to, so that was easy enough. And then the end point, well, I've already conveniently created this extra child game object with a transform that it needs. And of course, it's looking for a transform. So I'll just drag and drop these over. Now, cost override, this is actually whether or not it is more expensive or less expensive to take this particular route than another one. This isn't something I've covered yet in this tutorial series, but I will come back to it. The other thing is whether or not it's bi-directional, meaning can I go from uh, this one to this one and also from this one to that one. Now, if this is set as off, then it means this is a unidirectional one based on the start and end. And I'll show you an example of how that works in a second. All right, so this is all put in place. Now, the thing is, I don't even need to rebake the navigation mesh at this point because it's already trying to do the pathing. It just needs that one link to get from one nav mesh point to another one. And as you can see here, when I click on the navigation tab, that link is now evident. So if I hit play, it's going to work, by the way. We made it from one to the other. We got to the destination. Awesome. 
So with this done, let's consider something a little different. Say I want to have it such that you can cross one way, but not the other. This is pretty good for things such as falling down a drop, or maybe after you cross a location, the previous location is destroyed or collapsed or something, you know how it is in games. So you want to make sure you can't go back the other way. To do that, it's actually really easy. Like I said, by default, all of these off-mesh links are set as bi-directional. All we have to do is disable that. Now, in order to do that and actually prove to you that that works, what I'll do is, first of all, let's just run it as it currently is. Cool, that works fine because it still goes from this one on the left to this one on the right. What I'm going to do, just for the purposes of the example, is I'm actually going to move the destination and the agent around. There we go. You go over here. And you, you go over there. Now let's try it again. Ah, see? Now, the nav mesh agent can't get back to the one on the left, and that's purely because, in the context of navigation, that link only works from left to right. It's not working right to left. That means it's unidirectional rather than bidirectional. And that's all you need to do for that. It's actually really straightforward. So with this example done, I'm going to show you how you can make a mixture of both auto-generated and manual nav mesh links. To do that, I've created a slightly different example that carries three navigation meshes. Wait a minute, we're not in that example. Give me a second. Ah, there we go. However, as you can see in this instance, the nav mesh on the far left, as you can see here, I've actually got this to dynamically create nav mesh links between this floor up the top which I believe is floor three, because you know, the naming convention would have made sense, but it's farther away, but just work with it. So floor three has actually got, if we go into the object, to generate the off-mesh links. Now floor one doesn't, and that means that it's not worried about generating off-mesh links off of itself, but floor three is allowing us to generate links from that one to other nearby objects. However, I've still retained exactly the same setup as I did in the previous example, where between floor and floor 2, I've only got one off-mesh link, and I've made that by hand. But they go into the inspector, and you can see, oop, I've actually kept it as unidirectional, but maybe I want to make it bidirectional. So let's just test this out. We're going to go all the way from up here, round to down there. Do, 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 do. Yep, no problem. Easy money straight across. And you can see actually, if I was to go back and play that again, but keep the navigation tab open so you can actually see the navigation, you can see that it actually uses what it thinks is the closest dynamically generated off mesh link for it to kind of prioritize and streamline that movement. Whereas in this case, it has to use that one because it's the only available one. Now, if I was to actually swap both the agent and the destination and try this again, let's see how this one pans out. Get from floor two, floor one, no problem. But it gets stuck. Huh. Now, why is that? Well, it's actually really straightforward. If we go into the scene and have a little look, you'll note that the arrows on these off-mesh links are telling us something about the rep the kind of relationship that exists. So this is clearly bi-directional, because there's an arrow pointing to this point here on this nav mesh, as well as this point here on this nav mesh, and that tells us it's bi-directional. However, this one isn't. These are unidirectional. They only go from floor three to floor. And that's because when we get it to auto-generate the off-mesh links on floor three, it's making sure it's got a link off of floor three to any other nearby location that's going to have a navigation mesh on it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that floor one or floor, as I called it, I really should have kept with the naming scheme, but whatever. But floor, because generate off mesh links dynamically isn't on, I have to sit and actually make an off mesh link for floor to floor three. And if I don't do that, there's no way on earth, earth for it to get across. Whoops. So for the purposes of just for example in this video, let me actually do that. So what I'm going to do is I'll just create another empty. I'm going to create link two, and let's see, we'll just, ah, we'll just create another empty in this one, we'll call link, and we'll put it about here, and then in link two, I'm going to put that about here, ah, and then add another off mesh link, which starts here, 
ends there and I'm going to make it unidirectional because I don't see the point in making it bidirectional because all that's doing is adding another bidirectional all that's doing is adding another available link from floor 3 all the way over to floor 1 whoops I actually did the wrong thing there oh I know what I did I made it Ah, it's going from that. Oh, no, 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 that's the wrong thing. So it starts there, yeah, because if you see... <laughs> I'm going to keep this in for the sake of um, posterity in this video, just because it's actually a really good example. I've actually created a nav mesh link within the same nav mesh area, which is actually quite cool, but I didn't mean to do that. Let me fix it. And it ends here. So let's go back in. And we should be able... To see it in there now. Great, there we go. We've now got this extra extra link going out. Now let's try it again. Ugh. What a spanner. There we go. It worked that time. Happy days. And that's it for this video. It's a really simple overview of the different approaches we can take to using the off-mesh links to create specific transitions between nav mesh areas. In part 7, I'm going to look at something a little bit different, namely being able to dictate types of nav mesh areas as well as whether an agent can then move across them. This has been part 6 of the Unity Pathfinding tutorial series here on Table Flip Games. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more tutorials, plus our channel supported over on Patreon. So if you'd like to get access to our videos early, vote on new topics and get access to original source material, head on over to patreon.com forward slash tableflipgames. games.